Absolutely. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the 48 Now Couch. Today, I am joined with someone you may, you might just be familiar with. He has been in blockbuster films such as the Anchorman movies and of course he has been on many TV shows such as The Office and The Goldbergs. Of course today I am joined with the one and only David Keckner. Hello AJ. How are you doing today I'm David? Fantastic, thank you. Yourself? Doing very well. Now I don't know if your viewers know this. Have you ever talked about the history of your name? I actually have not. Fifth generation Anthony. Pretty That's awesome. Right. That's very southern. That's very awesome. Now, what's it's Anthony Joshua? Yes, sir. So that who's who was the Joshua? So the Joshua, my mom was a big fan of the name Joshua from oh, the Bible. So that one is uh, an, uh, another family one. It's funny. That okay, wasn't. Okay. Uh, so the middle names are different. Like gotcha. my dad's name's Anthony Ray. Right. Uh, my grandpa's name was Anthony Leo. No, do they go by the initials? Uh, they do not. No. Okay. They typically you did because, would go by Tony. Yeah. Uh, because in the house, it would get confusing because you're always in trouble. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I heard the word Anthony, uh, I knew I was uh, there. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. I'd be shaking to my yeah. boots there. But. It gets tense. Yeah, absolutely it does. Yeah. Well, you will be performing tonight, tomorrow night, and the next night for Stand Up Live. Here in Huntsville. Uh, have, before you came here today, had you ever heard of Huntsville? Uh, I've heard of it. I've uh, never been here. I we filmed Talladega Nights here partially, really, because we were at the actual uh, race, which is powerful. Uh, so the Talladega 500, right? Yeah. Um, so we were there, and within the first a couple laps, there's always going to be a car that goes out for whatever reason. So we took a pit mm -hmm. when the first car went out, and man, the thunder! I mean, you just feel the energy down there it was pretty awesome so not my first trip to alabama well, but my first trip to huntsville for sure very cool and how do you like gorgeous. it? it's gorgeous yeah i didn't know there were mountains here this is gorgeous it's Beautiful. very and you know we're in the springtime it's green it's just it's really nice but um at night what you need to do is go out and enjoy yourself at a local comedy club wouldn't you say so aj i think so i think that's the right thing to do yeah so um, I, yeah, i've got six six shows uh, Thursday night, uh, two Friday, uh, and then Saturday there's uh, the uh, eight, uh, office trivia with the yep. real Todd Packer, almost sold out, and then two more stand-up shows. So anyway, either way, it's entertainment, gang. That is right. I'm here to entertain you, and we're going to make it happen. Yeah, you mentioned the office trivia with no. the real Todd Packer. Which just means uh, I put on a suit, really. How did uh, that come, come about, the trivia? <clears throat> um, well, uh, uh, Rob, Rob uh, Mayer and I have been touring together for years, and we noticed this real thirst mm -hmm. for the office. And so Rob had the idea, he's like, why don't we try a trivia show? I said, okay. And so we put it together, and it's a hit, man. You know, I mean, there's the people that love the office that much, uh, it's almost a religion, right? So mm -hmm. they've watched all nine seasons multiple times, and it's very... Um, it's a different charged energy when they're, they're all there for the same purpose. Like, they all share a love of a thing mm -hmm. there in that room. Uh, it's, it's almost like a church. And all my shows are really, you know what? Better than church. And we know church is the greatest thing. Absolutely, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, sir. So uh, let's go back to your early life. Uh, you grew up in Missouri. Yep, small um, town of Missouri, Tipton, yep. Who were some of like your comedic influences growing up? Uh, Monty Python, uh, okay. at Saturday Night Live, uh -huh. uh, Abbott Costello, the Marx Brothers. Yeah. 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 Well, very cool. Um, and you also, you originally at the University of Missouri, you were studying political science. I was a policy major for three years, and then I just figured out like, oh, it's a dirty business. And in poli sci, you're either going to be a lawyer, professor, or work for a center, and hopefully, you know, work up to be that. And I just, I just lost my passion for that. I'm still passionate about politics, but it's not what I wanted to do. Um, and you know, I, I secretly always wanted to be an actor, but I'm from a small town, so mm -hmm. I had no idea how that works. But then, you know, as this is before the internet, kids. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I started reading all the books about Saturday Night Live and all that stuff, and I found out like, oh. 
that's how you do this. You go to a theater, and so then I moved to Chicago, did uh, Second City, and then SNL, and the rest, yeah. What was it like going through Second City in Chicago? It was the best. Um, I was in my 20s. I met so many brilliant, fascinating people. Uh, you're doing, I would be, I'd be on stage five nights a week. And so, wow. so, so many amazing, fascinating people and you're doing live comedy and it's improvisation, which means you take either a phrase or a word or, or mm -hmm. something like that. And then you're, we did long form. So you're doing 45 minutes, uh, just making it up. Uh, it was just thrilling. Yeah. Very impressive. I. I struggle with... Uh, Did you hear that, gang? <laughs> he said very impressive. Thank you, AJ. It's very impressive. What you do is very impressive. Uh, I don't know if I could do yeah, what you, you do. It's as easy as this conversation. This is improvised right now, correct? Right. Yes, sir. It's that easy. That's the thing that students don't sometimes understand. We are having a conversation. We don't know what we're going to say next, but we're both listening and responding, and that's how improvisation actually works. That's right. When people put this other pressure on themselves, like, oh, it's got to be funny. Well, the funny's going to come if it comes, you know. It's very true. Yeah. Uh, do you have a routine before you go on stage, like Prayer. something you do? Prayer. Is that true? Uh, no, you know what it is? Uh, <laughs> you, you, just, you just get into um, a psychic preparation of, uh, it's going to sound corny, but it's service, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, my job is to go perform for these people, and that's what I do, and I love it. But I, I do feel like I have a responsibility, so you just put yourself in that space, really. But I don't have any uh, interesting or odd or weird. How about this? I'll make a lie. I do 100 push-ups before every show. 100 push-ups, that's right. Getting those triceps, getting those triceps. <laughs> You're looking good, too. You're a liar, AJ. I am you're not. You're a good one. <laughs> you're looking good, yeah. Uh, so the TV gig you're undoubtedly most familiar with right. um, is The Office. Yep. Your role is Todd Packer. Uh, how really did that time on the show come to be? How did you get that role? So there was a British version of The Office. <clears throat> I, don't know, I don't know if people know that. And there's a, a character on the British version of The Office called Finchie, who's worse than Todd Packer. And, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, so, uh, Steve Carl and I have known each other since 1990 at Second City, yeah. and they were having trouble casting the role of Todd Packer. I was actually out of town shooting a movie picture, and uh, so Carell says to Greg Daniels, who I'd worked with before, why don't we give it to Keckner? He's an a-hole. And so, <laughs> uh, that's how that came about. <clears throat> oh, so, it was Steve's recommendation, really. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so The Office, it's an iconic television show. It remains insanely popular still to this day. Isn't it amazing? It's it unlike really anything is. I've ever been part of. Uh, uh, I, it's hard to explain, and it keeps going, and it's generational. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that every different generation reacts to it in a different way. So when they're young, they come to it and they go, oh, I understand humor. Mm -hmm. And then they get a little older and go, oh, all adults are dumb. That's what they enjoy. Then when they get to college, <coughs> they think, oh, the workplace is not that intimidating because those people exist. And then when they get in the workplace, they go, yeah, this is exactly like the office. That's my philosophy of it. I'm surprised no one's done a doctoral thesis on it. Maybe they have. If you have, please write into AJ. Yes, email me. I won't read you it. You know where to find me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, if you were a boss, would you hire Todd Packer? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. People, you know, I'm nothing like Todd Packer. Right. I'm the same height and uh, age, but that's a character. That's not me. I'm 100% different than that person. But it's so much fun to play. I bet. Yeah, because yeah. you cannot get away with saying things to another person's <laughs> face like Todd Packer can. It's true. Without consequence. Right. <laughs> That's very cool. Another thing you're very much known for, 40 episodes of The Goldbergs, um, lasted over 200 episodes. What is the secret to that show's success? Writing. The Just writing? good writing. Just good writing. Yeah. It, it makes it easy. When it's so well written, it's just easy. And the writing's fantastic for that show. Yeah. Very cool. And um, I want to move over to Anchorman. When you were filming Anchorman, did you have any idea the movie would become such yes. a... Yes. Well, no. I thought this is the greatest thing I've ever been part of. Uh -huh. 
uh, and often myself and Steve and Paul would gather in our trailer together, and it's almost like, you know, when, when there's a no-hitter in baseball, mm -hmm. you don't talk about it, right? No. So, so when it's the eighth the inning, jinx it. and it's a no-hitter, you don't go, hey, it's a no-hitter, because <laughs> you don't jinx it. It felt like yeah. that. Like To me, I was like, this is remarkable and uncommon. No, the show was, the, the movie was not a hit originally. They dumped it in August, had not great advertising. I don't think they knew what they had. And it became popular on cable and DVD, actually. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Another person, uh, you mentioned Steve Carell. Um, you also worked What happened to him? <laughs> no one knows. Oh, well. Where'd he go? God bless, Steve. <laughs> uh, another guy you've worked closely with is Will Ferrell. Can yeah. you describe being on set with him? I, I tell people this about Will. He's as good a human as you hope and better. Will is just, he's just an amazingly uh, sweet, kind, magnanimous person. And if you're sitting with Will, he's right here. I've been at premieres of other movies, <clears throat> you know, where Will is, and I'll, I'll come just to say hello, and he just locks in. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look at you like this. He's a, just a beautiful human being. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. 100% awesome. opposite of me. So if there's any young comics who are watching at home right now um, and are looking to break into the industry, what would you tell them? Get on stage. Also this, two things. Read the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell okay. and uh, the book On Writing by Stephen King. And I recommend listening to the audio book because Stephen King uh, narrates his own book and it's delicious. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I believe we read The Outliers back when I was in high school. You did. It's a very good it's book. It's a great yes. book. So many amazing stories. Yep. Um, it's about putting the time in. Yeah. Yeah. That is super awesome. Uh, if you could look back on your career and um, reflect on everything that you've done, is there anything that you would maybe take back or maybe it's a role that you didn't <laughs> pick up or something along those lines? I have five kids. Yeah. So some of my work is unfortunate, but if you ever see me in something like, why would he do that? I have five kids. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you got to work. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I've been very blessed that I've gotten a lot of work and it's been fun and I love it. I really love show business. I love doing all of it. Um, so you say looking back, would I change things? No. No. Because, you know, a life of regret is not worth it. Right? 100%. Yeah. Yes, sir. Plus, if you're, if, you're, if you're blessed enough to have a job, then you better enjoy it. Because those are hard to get, you know? They are. So for me, any day in show business, when you have a job and work, that's a celebration. Yes, sir. Yeah. Very cool. So you mentioned that you had five kids. Still um, do. Yeah. <laughs> or you, you have five yeah. kids. <laughs> um, how do you balance your your work life balance you're a very busy guy um, always I don't know if it's always on the road but you're on the road right now uh, you just try to be present mm -hmm. uh, in, in my view uh, it takes time it's mm -hmm. patience uh, all humans but your kids need two things to be seen and heard right yeah now how can we balance that the presence of mind to realize because uh, as parents, we always have our agenda. It's time to go. Let's go. Let's go. And there's some resistance. That means we missed something because we're not, I don't see you or hear you. So if we can practice this, <coughs> pardon me, patience of, you know, being present, seeing and hearing what their needs are, they're not going to match our needs, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Soccer games in half an hour, we got to go. Why, why don't you have your stuff on? And then we get upset, mm -hmm. right? But it is, you know, as easy as getting down to their level and going, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Do you want help putting your stuff together? You know, whatever it takes. I almost cried. <laughs> Feel free to. Oh. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> AJ's crying couch. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to shed a tear, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's all good. Um, now, um, so a comic, Jerry Seinfeld, you might be familiar with, he recently told The New Yorker his thoughts on modern day sitcoms. Um, I believe he said they're getting a little bit too PC. 
How do you, what's your stance on that? How do you feel about it? I don't it? have a stance. Uh, you know, look, Jerry created his own show. <clears throat> so he can speak to that. Right. Uh, I have not created my own show. And, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's the times. Like, I, you know, I don't do any political humor. If you're known as a political humorist, mm -hmm. that audience is looking for that. Right. So, uh, you know, my show is relatable as a human being, a father of five, going through life, show business, all that stuff. You try to find the common thread that we are all, uh, you know, experiencing mm -hmm. and then try to turn it on its side and make it funny. So... I, I can't elocute on whatever Jerry says, because right. let's face it, he's Jerry Seinfeld. That's right. Yeah, very cool. So what are you looking forward to the most uh, this weekend? It's happening right now. Sitting on AJ's couch at WAFF. Well, I, mean, I can't beat this. Um, I, you know, to me, it's, I, I love live. I love doing live shows. Um, I get to perform, and it's a blessing. Do you have a favorite show that you look, or well, not a favorite show, but a show in particular you look back on and you're like, dang, that was a good show? Bless this mess. Are you talking about television? Yeah, it's television. Yeah, yeah. There was a live. show I did, yeah. we did a year and a half, Bless This Mess, and then COVID came along and uh, ended it. But it, I thought that thing was going to run for years. It was so much fun. It was so well written. It was such a wonderful cast. And um, that's the one thing I, I just wish had, had continued. Cool. Um, so one Lennon Parham was my wife on that show, yeah. and she and I had this chemistry and this, it was a blissful ease. I, I, do, I do say that she is my favorite acting partner. Uh, mm -hmm. She and I were just locked in, and it just was effortless, which is rare, you know. So, Lennon, let's do a show together. On AJ's couch. <laughs> right here. Right here on the couch. Yes. Who would you sit here and cry? <laughs> hey, we all need a good cry in our life right? every now and then. I used right. to tell my kids, crying allows uh, happiness to your soul. So when you let the tears out, happiness can come into your soul. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, one of your earlier film roles was Dirty Work. <laughs> um, Starring the late Norm Macdonald yep. and directed by Bob Saget. I know, right? Um, it was a rare behind the camera turn. What do you remember about those two? Uh, Saget is a, it was such a beautiful man. Mm -hmm. Just lovely. A lovely human. Um, and again, present and just, you know, appreciative, um, gracious, talented. And then Norm, you know. Yeah. Immense, um, special, rare. You know, you, you you look back and you're like, wow, I got to know these people and work with them and they're no longer here and, and we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the Stoics? Uh, is it uh, um, Amor Fate? We're, we're all going to die. So now let us do our best in each moment. And then when we do reflect, like I... I, I I'm grateful for having those interactions with those people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I'm going to get you to cry, AJ. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I feel it coming. Yeah, all right. I really I'm going to get you. <laughs> oh. So for anyone watching at home, here in Alabama, there might be some people who have never made their way out to Hollywood or don't know what being in show business is like. Uh, can you kind of describe um, in the best way that you can? what show business is like or being involved in that? I can and I can't. So uh, you can uh, have a philosophical um, reasoning. It's a business. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you really have to do. So you are, um, your desire is to be an artist uh, and s for some. Um, and some are just, you know, um, mercenaries that want to make money. So there's two types that work there. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's just a money-making business. And you hope that perhaps what your talents offer are, are pliable and, you know, get a paycheck. That's my thing. Um, so to me, to get paid to perform is the blessing. Now, so you can have a hundred approaches to show business, right? Mm -hmm. Mine is only 
I'm going to do my thing. And if you dig it, hire me. Now, that's not the best one, because then you're like, well, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever it is. So these days, uh, you also have the opportunity to create your own thing because of social media and so many different platforms. And I'm doing those too. I can't speak to it yet, but it's coming. So I'm doing a podcast and uh, several other things in, in, in the works. Um, but yeah, you know, you just find out where the rivers are running and get your boat in it. Not a bad metaphor. Not bad at all. Two fathoms here. Do you know what that is? I do not. Mark know. Twain. Mark Twain. Two fathoms here. Yes, okay. when they'd pilot the river, so they had a pole because uh, the rivers shift with the silt. So you had to have the pole so they can navigate where to put the boat, right? Uh -huh. So two fathoms here, Mark Twain. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's very well, I'm yeah. from Missouri, so rivers. Rivers and Mark yeah. Twain. Yeah. Yeah. Samuel Clemens. Do you know that? It's his real name? I did not know that. Yes, you did. He, AJ, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, I definitely he's knew kidding it. you. I knew it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Missouri cool. guy. Yeah. Missouri. Uh, what is it like really growing up in Missouri? Well, I grew up in a very small yeah. town. So um, it was, for me, a bit um, restricted. I knew I wanted something more. So I think it's probably perfect that I grew up in a small town because I knew I wanted to leave and go do something else. That's had it. I lived in a city, I might not have had that yearning to go do something else. So it was perfect. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm from, uh, originally, I'm from a small town as How well. How small? Uh, pretty small. Uh, Temple, Georgia, it's west of Atlanta. What's the population? I, I want to say it's like, I, I don't have a number for you there, but I would say it's pretty small. <laughs> My mine was 2,000. 2,000? Yeah. But how close to Georgia, uh, Atlanta were you? It was about 45, 50 minutes. Oh, so you're close to a metropolis. Yeah. Relatively like, close. The closest movie yeah. theater from my small town was 45 miles. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. A bit isolated. Yeah. How, yeah, what was that like growing up? Like, Frustrating. Yeah, you yeah. had to drive. Well, you'd see a, a movie trailer and then go, oh, I'm never going to see that movie because my folks don't like to drive to see the movies. Uh -huh. Yeah. And th th this is when, you know, when I grew up, there's only three channels unless you had cable. So, and you, so you, d you wouldn't anticipate, oh, it's, I'll just catch it later. That didn't exist. You know, you had to go to the theater to, to see the right movie there. and that was the end of it. Yeah. What was your favorite movie? As a kid? As a kid. Uh, as a, a young, uh, so, well, I mean, when I was younger, it was Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid kid, that's a tough one. I always loved the Herbie the Love Bug movies. Yeah. Uh, uh, what else? You know, as a kid, right? Computer wore tennis shoes. Uh, you know, goofy stuff that kids like. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I believe that's all the questions I have for you. Um, Very well. If there's anything that maybe I didn't ask that you would like to add. I'd like to add that I'm doing shows all weekend. All weekend. Uh, here in Huntsville at uh, St uh, Stand Up Stand Live. Up Live. Yes, Boy, I almost glitched there, didn't I? Thursday, two Friday, three Saturday. One office trivia at four, almost sold out. But uh, I'm here to entertain. So you either come to the show or I come to your house and I'll expect dinner. <laughs> well, you heard it here first from David Techner. Uh, you guys come out to stand up live, see him in action. Guaranteed He's a banger of a time, folks. A banger of a time. He's here all weekend. David, thank you so much for joining with God me. God bless today. you, man. Right on. Thank you. Absolutely. Right thank on. you. All right. That was awesome. I didn't get him to cry. Next time. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> <laughs>